Alright, hey guys, this is David Crowley from Hothead Productions, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make some of these grungy, stylized pictures that you've been seeing for the gray state behind the scenes photos. With some basic uh, Photoshop editing, you can get some results like this, so here are some examples. Just using a lot of grunge textures and a lot of color effects, you can really start to um, stylize pictures a certain way, and this is kind of the angle we've been taking for the gray state photos. And this has a lot of treatments applied, like some uh, light bleeding from the sides, like if this were a, a film camera or something, which just adds some color and variety to the pictures and have really been a pretty big success. Anyway, to do this, let me get rid of this and open up Photoshop. So I'm working with Photoshop CS4, which is a little bit outdated already, but it's not a big deal. You can get anything done that you need to with it. So today what we're going to be working with is the still frame right here. And we have the elements like uh, the Gray State logo right here, graystatemovie.com. This has been pre-done in a little bundled group right here. So this is just a text layer with some effects applied. That's just a simple glow, which you'll see in a little bit, and the logo on a separate layer. And of course, this is a PNG, so it has an alpha channel, so you can see right through it. And I have a couple varieties of different grunge layers. So the first thing to do is to open up the image that you want to work with. I'm just going to select this whole folder in this other window. I'm going to hit Command Shift, drag this group over, and it should drop right into place on this image. So now you see that the logo and the website title are there. And we'll go ahead and leave the grunges for now. So we're going to do some quick basic effects that we've been doing for the gray state photos. First thing I'm going to do is double click on the background and then hit Enter. And that will change it from a background layer into a regular layer. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to duplicate that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift Command U to turn this into a black and white layer. There we go. Now this can be reapplied to the original layer under different blending modes to get different effects. Now this is the best way to get a bleach bypass effect, and that would be the uh, desaturated, really high contrast look that Gray State has. Using a Shift Plus or Shift Minus, what we're going to find toggling through these blend modes is that it's going to turn black almost instantly. And there you see multiply turns it almost black, but around the highlights you can start to see how it's starting to get that really pleasing bleach bypass look that we're going for. So the blend mode overlay tends to work best in these really, really dark scenarios. So I'm going to go to overlay and sure enough the highlights are reading a little bit better. But the first thing I'm going to do is go to command M and this will open up the curves adjustment within the layer right here. This is the, the black and white layer and I will just bring it up to increase the brightness and obviously that's clipping with the highlights a little bit too much so I'm going to bring that back down and this will, I mean you just got to kind of touch and go, kind of adjust and see what you're looking for but the main thing we want to do is uh, bring those darks up a little bit more just so we don't lose them and that's one way to do it another way would be simply lowering the opacity of the black and white layer to kind of bring back the original layer and obviously this isn't really getting us what we want, but it is kind of getting rid of all these kind of gross tans that you're seeing along the side and making it more of a contrasted image. Going back to the original layer, something we can do is hit Command M on that and bring up the original brightness. And with this image, I really don't mind letting the highlights go so much given that the backdrop should be glowing anyway. But you can kind of get the eyes popping out a little bit better there. Yep. There you can kind of see HT's grimace. He's not very happy about this picture, it would seem. Okay, that's getting pretty good. So I'm going to go back to the original layer, and I'm going to go to our Dodge and Burn tools. Going first with Dodge, I'm going to select the midtones. And using the brackets, I'm going to increase the size of the brush. I'm going to start to touch up some of the areas that I want to pop out a little bit more. And I've got an exposure of 50% here. So it's not too heavy. You don't want to go too heavy on it. But you do want to bring out these defining lines within the face so you can kind of see what's going on there without adding a whole lot of extra stuff. So he's looking pretty mean there. That's looking pretty nice. And if you want to backtrack or if you want to darken anything, you can go to the burn tool. And same thing. You can kind of darken some spots back up and really add to the contrast of the image without making it super dark. So I'm going to finish up with the hair, really defining these lines here. 
Okay, so that's a pretty good image, but now one thing that, you, that I always do when working with these pictures is I create a solid color over here. And here's where it really gets nice. And the thing about this image is that you want it to look, well, what I want to do is I want to make it look kind of cold. So I'm going to select kind of a gray-blue color. So I've got a solid color. I'm going to throw it up on the top. And I'm going to make it soft light. And what this is going to do is it's going to kind of create an overall blue tint to the image without really wrecking much of the image's infrastructure, so to speak. And this can kind of be adjusted to be more saturated or less saturated or brighter or darker. I'm going to select something kind of in the middle, something right about there. And when you on off this layer, you can kind of see that it really helps to suppress the, uh, the flesh tones. And if that's something you want, you can create some natural contrast within the image by selecting the masking layer. Selecting your brush, making a black brush, blowing it up a little bit, and again, I'm coloring in the masking layer over here. And what you're going to do is you're going to punch holes in this color solid. So that will bring back some of the flesh tones within the face, if that's what you want. But I'm not going to go for that, so I'm going to delete everything in there. Okay, so that's pretty much what I'm looking for. And again, what you can do is you can double up these color solids. And um, a nice color harmony would be the blue and the orange. So if I wanted to throw in an orange and just kind of play with the blend modes to see what kind of interesting effects I can get, that's something that you can certainly do as well. And here you're seeing some really interesting things. And a lot of the gray state photos have been accidents, just kind of uh, exploring with these color solids. But given that this is a screenshot, I'm going to go with a more natural approach and just... Uh, Go with this. So going back to our grunges, here they are. I've got two of them selected. I'm going to hit Command. I'm going to drag this into the image. And zooming out, you can kind of see where it is. Hit Command T to bring up your Transform tool. And while you rotate, if you hold down Shift, it will lock to these basic positions. So I'm going to scale it to about the same size as my image. I'm going to hit Enter to get out of the Transform tool. Zoom back in. And that is my grunge. Now, I don't really want the, uh, the color contamination of this image bleeding with my original image, so I'm going to hit Shift-Command-U to desaturate this. And right now, it is on top of everything else. You can see it over here in the Layers window. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift-Plus to toggle through the blend modes. And doing that, you can kind of see how it starts to blend with the image in different ways. And none of these really strike my fancy too much, but you can kind of see how they change from each other, how they interact with the darks and the lights in different ways. And obviously this can be combined. You can split it up and have one doing one blend mode to interact with the highlights a certain way and one doing the shadows. Now I'm really not looking for too much with this, and what I could do instead of adding a grunge layer is simply add some noise by going noise add noise and I'm doing this to my black and white layer and you can kind of uh, up the noise and you can see how it starts to interact with the image without really contaminating the color in the underlying base image over here so that is one option if you just want to add some film like noise to the image otherwise you can go with a more um, interesting approach by having an actual picture of a concrete block or whatever this is so the one I dislike the least would be would have to be either overlay or soft light and I'm going to go with overlay and that being said you can pop up the curves window and get some interesting effects by uh, adding curves some contrast to the original grunge image so you see some different effects you can get and if it's too heavy on the face you can throw on a mask and begin to paint it out of the face or you can lower the opacity. And uh, usually what I do as a final touch up is I'll throw on a curves layer over everything. And to add some natural um, tonal contrast, I'll select the blue channel, for example. And maybe I want to uh, drop the blues in the shadows but raise them in the highlights. And obviously that's not looking very good, so maybe I'll reverse it. And that's not looking very good either, but that's just an example of a final touch-up you can do using all RGB channels to add some overall contrast to the end. I'm not really liking it, so I'm just going to leave it as it is, actually, which is a nice thing to have when you're working with so many of these pictures. But a good thing I usually do is um, 
if the picture is not so dark like this one is and it has more uh, flesh tones involved usually I'll select my red channel and I'll drop the red in the shadows to kind of make the shadows a little bit more green and then I'll raise it in the highlights and then fine-tune as I go because what you see with color harmonies is that if the shadows are cool and your skin tones are a little bit lighter it will tend to advance in the image and provide a more pleasing image to the eye. So I'm not really liking any of my curves adjustment, so I'm just going to get rid of this layer by hitting delete. And my final thing that I'll look at is how my uh, original logo and website are interacting with the rest of the image. Obviously with a lot of contrast you're going to have some readability issues. So I'll on off this and it's, it's looking okay actually, but selecting this whole group you can toggle through the blend modes and kind of see what interesting effects you get. And that's just an example because obviously with so much white and so much black you're going to get a lot of variety and a lot of uh, inconsistency. So maybe you want to split these layers up or maybe you want to just leave it alone like I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to normal and I'm happy with this image. So I'm going to save out a JPEG and you'll see it online shortly. This has been David Crowley with Hothead Productions and this has been a tutorial on how to make a grunged up Photoshop image. Thanks for watching.